Well, now you have two boys, um, and Ryan posted this video of you guys doing a hot sauce challenge. Yes. Um, so who is the toughest? Uh, the youngest of the beast. It's Andrew and Amari. Or who's that? Is that me? I don't know, but someone in the background is living their best life. Yeah, they, they're, they're going. So that's Amari running through, like, going dramatic with the hot sauce. And, and everybody's head was sweating profusely. Yes. Um, but, like, I watched this one show, and you interview, and you, like, just eat hot wings throughout the thing, and I was like, I'm preparing for it. So, I, and they just said, like, I want to do it with you, Dad. And like, okay. And then Andrew, after, like, wing number three, was like, oh, it's too much. And Amari's like, let's go. Oh. Like, let's go. The six year, he was five at the time. He was like, okay. And he, he did was like, it what? all the way through to the end. Oh, my gosh. He, and the then he touched his head. It was just wet and slick <laughs> with sweat all over it. But it was mind over matter. The kid is strong. I, I love it. I love it. Wait, yeah. so in the video, your son, Andrew, yeah. looks at the camera. And, well, let's just see it. Let's see it. <laughs> We're starting off with sauce number Here we go. one. <laughs> Shouldn't be too bad. Okay. What's up, ladies? <laughs> you know what happens, right? Yeah, there we go. Ladies? What's up, ladies? He feels good about himself. You, you better just buckle up for a ride. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want him to not feel good about no, himself. So some, we'll just... That's some frightening foreshadowing, though. It really, really is. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm like, that's my <laughs> five-year-old, by the way. Really? My sister or my daughter had a, a play date with one of her friends, and she's a couple years older okay. than my son. And my son apparently came out to the pool without his shirt on, didn't wear, like, his rash guard, just no top and just the yeah, shorts, yeah. and was like, yeah. ladies. Feeling himself. Five. Feeling himself. He's five. Yeah. I'm scared. Had, they are. Are who yeah. they are when they come into the world. You Amen. know what I'm saying? But, but they, let's me know when we're gonna have the talk. But sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's already happened. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. like just get in there. Birds and bees. Yeah. We're, we're you gonna... gotta get in there. Yeah. We are back with Sterling K. Brown. <laughs> this show, This Is Us, is back on NBC starting January 4th. So let's talk. This Is Us. Like, how are you feeling? Is it bittersweet? Because this is such a Brilliant cast. The chemistry is done so well. Ever, yeah. It's such a popular show. And it's just such a great message, too. The family vibe from the show. It's yeah. just been so great overall. So is it kind of bittersweet for you? You're excited to do other things, but you're also, like, kind of sad? That's exactly what it is. Um, yeah. I love the show. Yeah. It's been one of the best six-year ride of my life. Yeah. Like, professionally, it's been absolutely amazing. Beautiful people. I'm looking at my Black Pearson family over here. Yeah. And I've gotten a chance to see these three little girls grow up over time. Like, every time I'm on stage with them, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to miss them. And I see yeah. their parents who are backstage with them, and I was like, I, I love your daughters. And you've watched them grow up. And I've literally watched yeah. them grow up. So once we start to get to, like, the last two or three episodes, there'll be something that happens that I won't be able to stop from happening. Oh, no. Because I know I'm actually saying goodbye. Yeah. Right now, I'm like, oh, we're having a great time and just blah, blah, blah. When it gets to the end, oh, no. there'll be no acting. It'll be ugly crying. It'll, it'll be ugly. Okay. Hideous. Okay. Yeah, hideous? Yeah. It's great, though. Yeah. Um, so you have a few cool projects um, yep. coming up um, after This Is Us, so can you reveal any? I can reveal a few. I got okay. a, a, a limited series on Hulu coming up called Washington Black. Yeah. It's about a young slave boy who was... It's a, 2019 bestseller on the New York Times. Young black boy named Washington Black growing up on a slave plantation in Barbados. Escapes from that plantation with his abolitionist brother, uh, abolitionist slave master's brother on a flying machine. They crash into a pirate ship. They wind up going to the States. They flee to Nova Scotia. They have to go to the Arctic. They come back to Europe and then wind up ultimately in Africa. So it's this globe-trotting adventure wow. that's set in the 1800s that I'm very excited about. So I got that coming out. I'm doing a buddy comedy with Randall Park, yeah. who's one of my favorite funny people after, like, you Always Be My Maybe, if you ever see that on Netflix. Yeah. Guy's absolutely fantastic. So we're going to do a little buddy cop thing together, which is a lot of fun. I got a lot, another action thing with Amazon that's coming out called Coyote Blue, where Brown gets to kick a little butt. I cry a lot, so I'm trying to, like, work other <laughs> muscles besides the tear ducts. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then I have I, more things to add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to segue into some other things as well. Yeah. So that's just a, a few of them that I'm. That's really exciting. Excited. Yeah. Thank oh, that's you. so cool. Thank you very much. I love, I'm excited to see you in other things thank as well. You. It's like really cool. Um, wait, and you're an ambassador with Survivorship today. So through Bristol, I want to say this right, Myers Squibb, right? Myers Squibb. Yeah, right. yeah. So could you tell everybody what that is about? I absolutely can. Um, so Survivorship today. Uh, is a program about how people are living long-term with cancer. I got involved in this particular program because in 2004, my uncle Sonny passed away mm. six months from the day of his diagnosis from cancer, okay? Wow. Devastating thing for my family, and so what can I do to sort of, like, you know, lift some, bring some attention to the cancer world and survivorship? The good thing is people are living longer, but just because you're living longer doesn't mean your life goes back 
to what it was before. The quality, yeah. Exactly. So there is a series of conversations that are available on the website, survivorshiptoday.com, where you can see people who are going through what you've gone through and how they have survived this process. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that the past two years has taught me is how important community is mm -hmm. and how devastating it is when we are deprived Yeah, and of isolated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you're feeling that intense isolation that you can by going through something that no one else is going through, go check it out. Feel emboldened by the fact that you are not alone and for the caregivers as well. It's incredibly informative. That's so cool. So, yeah. well, we actually have a man named AJ in our audience. He's right one there. of the survivors this program works with. He's a survivor of lung cancer. So, hey, AJ. Hi, Kelly. Go ahead, you can stand up. Yeah. Um, so, can you tell us a little of your survivorship like story? Sure, absolutely. After two years of struggling, with going from doctor to doctor, not knowing what's wrong with me, just a hissing sound. I was eventually given the devast most devastating news. I have stage four lung cancer. Still emotional today because I was told you won't probably see beyond six months, just like Uncle Sonny. Yeah. Mm. And it ripped everything out of me. And today, that was eight and a half years ago, I was told. <laughs> Less. But what people don't understand is, as my daughter will tell you, I look like a supermodel. You know, <laughs> everything looks great. But in reality, I go through a lot of psychological and emotional struggles on a daily basis. Just unbuttoning my shirt, impossible, impossible. I had to have brain surgery. I lost function on the right side of the body. This arm is a beautiful arm. Looks like a great prop on set, but cannot do anything, it's useless. And so I cannot even unbutton my shirt. And so life is a struggle on a daily basis. And I'm emotionally challenged every single day. I am told by all the decoration around me, you have cancer. You will not survive very long. Mm. And what survivorship today has allowed me to do is to realize to live in this moment, yes. to live <laughs> in this present being that I am and recognizing just how beautiful my existence is and the beauty of everybody that's surrounding me, the beauty of the world. And I live moment to moment. And that's the beauty of this program. For me personally, I am so truly blessed from six months to eight and a half years, you think it's a miracle. But the bigger miracle for me is my family. My family have been me, behind me from day one, picking up after me when I can pick up. And it's so humbling to know that a wife will stand right by you at the time of your, your, your worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. And my children, who were only very little at the time, have grown up to become future doctors who want to make a difference in the world of cancer and cancer wow. care. So I'm really impressed. My oldest boy just graduated as a doctor. Wow. Yeah. Because it probably made an impact. So, well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. And thank you to everybody who's a part of it. Like, it's just such a, an amazing thing.